<laughs> Welcome back, folks, to the another episode of the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast. Yeah, we're still balling on the health effects of lighting. On today's show, we have Dr. Nisa Khan, Greg, straight out of Minnesota. Uh, that's where she went to school, not any longer in New Jersey, but uh, what a wild discussion we had today. Uh, this is, uh, I say, I'm saying more words than I said during that whole podcast right now because uh, you guys are going back and forth pretty heavy. But it's an interesting topic and something that I think our listeners are going to like. So definitely check it Enjoy out. Enjoy it, guys. This, this episode of the show is brought to you by Keystone Technologies. Go to K-E-Y-S-T-O-N-E-T-E-C-H.com, baby. That's KeystoneTech.com, the retrofit kings, Greggy. And this, uh, this episode is actually going to be aired during Light Fair. Uh, so Light Fair, we're all there right now. Maybe we're listening to it as we're walking around Light Fair. I doubt it, but that would be fun if they were. But Keystone's going to introduce some new new product there. And you'll see this if you go to their booth. They're going to have some uh, screwing A19, A21, A25 HID replacement lamps. So 122, 77 volt, downsized, compact size, and they're going to go up to 35 watts. You don't see a lot of that in a downsized HID replacement. They're getting There's hardcore. no web link to it yet but it's going to be an awesome product. Check them out at Light Fair, man. Check them out at Light Fair. And you know what pisses me off about that, though, Greg? They should have unveiled them at the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors show, which was a couple weeks ago. Keystone. Yeah, they could have done that, too. You would have won product. <laughs> best pro- Did they win? I think they won best product anyway, didn't they? Anyway. They won so anyways. Go to KeystoneTech.com. That's K-E-Y-S-T-O-N-E-T-E-C-H.com and N-A-I-L-D.org for right now. We got the LinkedIn legend. Dr. Nisa Khan on the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast. Welcome to the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast, Nisa Khan. Thank you very much, Mike and Greg. Uh, good to be with you. Yeah, so we've been we've been following you a little bit on LinkedIn, and um, you are, I would say that you have some opinions about the lighting business that we'd like to unpack. Where do you want to start? Um, I want to start with what you just said, um, when it comes to science and mathematics, I don't give opinions. Uh, The word opinion has been uh, loosely used around the world um, by a lot of people. Mm. Um, If you uh, say what color I like as my sweater or um, as in my house, that's an opinion. If you dig into it, there may be some science to it, but on a surface, it's basically an opinion. Anything that I've done in my entire life with LEDs, lasers, wireless, microwave, um, fiber optics, it's not at all my opinion. Mm. Um, The only person who made that distinction that I know uh, vigorously, well, Bill Gates is one that does that, but um, Einstein, he said, uh, it doesn't matter what I think. Oh, Stephen Hawking. His wife asked, uh, Stephen, You're throwing around you some big names here. You're throwing around some big yeah, names. Uh, well, well, they're important to me. Um, sure. and, and they're right. Uh, Stephen Hawking used to say, it doesn't matter what I think. <laughs> it just is. That's what nature does. Mm. And science ex- tries to explain nature. And anything that I have ever said and written, um, I'm very, very careful mm-hmm. in doing my experiments, my mathematical formulation forwards and backwards. And um, sometimes there may be mistakes in it. And as soon as I find something, I correct it. And I wait for others to find uh, uh, mistakes if there are any. Typically, they're not because I don't say anything or put something out there uh, without checking a whole lot. And it is absolutely not my opinion, anything I've ever said in LinkedIn or anywhere else. So you're you're a scientist. You're a scientist. I'm a scientist. I'm a mathematician. I'm an electrical and your, engineer. And your, and your research is up for peer review should someone want to review it. My research like has been peer reviewed. The right. book is peer reviewed. Um, the book was peer reviewed by four um, lighting and uh, optics go scientists. Uh, mm-hmm. Three out of four um, had uh, fabulous things to say. Mm-hmm. One didn't. Um, and he's I a jerk, got lucky though. with. <laughs> well, I'm just joking. He's a lighting guy, and uh, we can talk about lighting. Uh, sure. Lighting dropped science a long time ago, and I don't blame the lighting industry for dropping science a long time ago because it is the lamp manufacturers that gave them certain lamps that they could do something with, and they made it easy enough 
So luminance didn't matter. A lot of things don't matter. You can uh, basically um, approximate light that is emitted from the lamp if you go far enough away as a point light source. And all the mathematics, everything gets very, very easy and it becomes scalar and it's just easy. So the lighting people, I found out, you know, when I got into lighting, I was not a lighting person. I was an optics laser fiber optics waveguide person for 20 years. Um, worked for Bell Labs. If you know anything about Bell Labs, it's the best research place there was. It still is probably. Um, in America. Yeah. In the world, the, the original maser and laser was invented in Bell Labs, and I was taught by those scientists. Some of them won Nobel Prizes. So um, I take my work, scientific work, mathematical work, extremely seriously. I was... I've always been saying on this show that there's no such thing as a lighting engineer. That doesn't exist. There's no title called... There lighting. can be. Maybe there is. There but can there, Maybe there can be, but I have not met one yet. Yeah. And the so idea... So what happened... Hang on. Let me ask, I'm gonna, let me ask you a question. So the idea that lighting dropped science, which I love that. That's probably going to be the name of the show. But what is it about the lighting industry that right now is at the forefront that people that sell light bulbs every day, what, what is it from the scientific community that we can convey to people that are in the lighting business right now that is urgent and important? In LED lighting or lighting? Yeah. Li or LED just li non-LED lamps? Let's start with LEDs and then we'll go into lighting in general. Okay, so um, when I was talking before, I, I'm going to answer your question because I sure. always like to answer every question that is asked of me. Mm -hmm. So um, cool. lighting was doing fine by dropping science. I don't blame anybody for doing that because if everything becomes simple and scalar, you don't have to know everything. And, and the, the less we can get away with, that's just human nature, less we can get away with, most people like it. So if you have a lamp like an incandescent lamp and a lamp like a fluorescent lamp of any shape, the squiggly uh, compact fluorescent lamp or the tubular, sure. all of those, uh, they are made in a way that luminance doesn't matter. It's constant all the way uh, along the surface. So lighting engineer doesn't have to exist. Uh, a lighting designer knows more or less what the light distribution from those lamps are and they can take a slice of it. They don't have to work in 3D. They can take a slice of it and that's 2D or even even 1D really. Mm -hmm. And say, well, if I know the, uh, and everybody uh, loves using lux, which is lumen per meter square or lumen per square feet. Um, so one is lux, the other one is- uh, Foot uh, candles. Foot candle, thank you. That's all you need. That's all people like Naomi Miller, uh, David DeLora, uh, uh, Ian Lewin, that's all they ever needed. And that's all they ever need to produce great lighting in a room, in a hall, outside, you're done. So when LEDs come along, they're not point sources. They're not producing omnidirectional light. Their luminance is not constant on, a, on the surface. So let me get a rectangular, actually it's a square, it doesn't matter really. So a lot of people in the lighting industry don't know. That's why I don't know. Do you have you seen my book? Not yet. I'm gonna read it though. Oh. No. Well, mm -hmm. you can get my book whenever you want. But in any laser, can I get book, a can I get a um, signed a signed copy? Of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. LED or lasers, uh, the diode lasers, there are different kinds of lasers. There's gas lasers, there's solid state laser made out of ruby, quartz, um, what have you. And then there came along semiconductor lasers. And I was taught in university both by the inventor of the ruby laser and uh, one inventor of the semiconductor laser. And semiconductor laser race, all of this was going on in 1962. And, <clears throat> so, and they all had LEDs first. This is the way a semiconductor laser diode works. First, it's an LED, then it becomes a laser. And they knew they would work with the LED for a long time. And laser was a different thing. And why is it a different thing? What, what are the differences? And why is LED not a good lighting source? What do the lighting engineers have to know about LED is what you asked, correct? Mm -hmm. What do we need to know? What do we right? need to know? Right. So mm -hmm. 
And that's why every complaint I ever had in LinkedIn, I don't always repeat it because it's boring and it sometimes uh, if it's the same thing, but it is the inorganic laser, that, uh, LED, that's the problem. Or, so when we were in universities, people who worked on better and better lasers, different type of lasers, you know, nobody cared about LEDs at the time. One professor said, LEDs and solar cells are the future. And he was right in a way because lasers are good for medical surgery, welding, fiber optics. And, you know, it did great. And all those lasers have to be very... Um, what do you call it, very specialized and um, highly improved uh, structures and a long, they have to last a long time and so forth. Hang on. What does the lighting industry need to know? Because people are listening to this right now. We don't want to lose them on too okay. much. Let's get to the it. Lighting, yeah, you're right. The lighting industry needs to know and a laser is an LED first. So if you don't know how to build a laser and you have to be very, very careful, uh, there Laser, semiconductor laser is a diode and light emitting diode, LED is a diode. They're both diode, meaning they both have PN junctions. Let's not go there. We, mm -hmm. we need to talk about the lighting aspect of it. Yes. Um, so inorganic LED, um, it's a chip. These are little chips. Mm -hmm. uh, the standard diode is around a one millimeter by one millimeter. It's not a magical size. It could be two millimeter by two millimeters, sure. two by one. Mm -hmm. It could be one micron by one micron. How is it hurting people, Nisa? It's hurting people because this chip is flat. Okay. And that's the only way they can be made. You cannot make the wafers. Wafers are this round wafers, silicon, gallium arsenide, gallium nitride, whatever have you, they are completely flat. Why They're does it hurt people? Why does it hurt people? Because if light comes out of a flat surface, it is no longer the same light distribution as if, if light comes out of a sphere or a tungsten coil. Why is that bad? You look yeah. at uh, the section A part, which is an LED chip. Um, I, I drew that. So it's a 3D. It's basically a rectangle and they make it a square. You can do sure. either. doesn't matter. So and light comes out as a cone from a source. Each they, they are rays, you know, single rays, but each ray, when it contains light power, is in a cone. So I drew three cones, A, B, C. Can you see that? Yes. So if it is a um, curved source, that's section B, mm -hmm. and you can do this experiment with any... You, uh, you know, anything you want. You take some ice cream cones, uh, put them on a string of, uh, 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 on a string. And then if you straighten out the string, you see all the cones will overlap. And if you bend it, the cones will diverge in different directions. Okay, you stop being such oh. a scientist and tell me, okay. <laughs> tell me why this is bad. What happens? Here? This is bad because you have to pay attention to um, section A. Yeah. When all those cones overlap, what they're doing is light is aggregating tremendously in one spot. Okay. So this, everybody knows, at least the LED manufacturers all know, if you take the uh, light distribution, if you measure the light distribution on the surface, mm -hmm. you're not going to get a constant, constant, light density, you get a variable light density and the density basically is maximum at the center of the LED chip. So it ends up being looking like a, if you look at 1D, the density ends up looking like this. Do you see that? Yes. And mm -hmm. constant would be, so light density can either be constant like the rectangle I drew here, if you take mm -hmm. a slice from it, mm -hmm. or it can concentrate in the middle. So Can LEDs a lens are- Or a diffuser fix that? If you put it over the, the LED? But again, I have to talk a lot yeah. of science. I cannot avoid it, but the why is it bad for people? So more the, the bigger the LED chip is, and more efficient the LED chip is, and we, I'm not going to get into what makes an LED chip very, very efficient. It has sure. to be very clean material and all those yeah, things. Yeah. So we get a lot of light elements inside generated sure. from the current that you drive into it. 
And if it's very, very efficient materially, and it comes out of a flat surface and all LED, all LED chips are flat, there's nothing you can do about it. If you try to bend it, it'll become crumble and a bunch of salt grains. Okay, it, okay, it but so, so what, what is it that hurts people? Why does it bother people? What does it do? If the light concentration is huge, and the thing is not just that, an incandescent light bulb more or less produces a light density that is constant, like the rectangle I drew here. Mm -hmm. It's a little different, but it's more or less like that. And it's spreading everywhere. Mm -hmm. And again, if we go back to lux, the lux that is falling on your eyeball is much less. You can have a 900 lumen light bulb and you can have a 900 lumen incandescent bulb and you can have a 900 lumen led bulb and if you go in the center of it look directly at it what falls on your eye from the same total lumen light bulb in the case of led it is several times higher it could be 10 times higher okay so there's like this lumen pressure or something how much that light is not lumen pressure, it's lumen power. And power can be pressure, but you, you're right in a way. It all is the concentrated light energy falling on your light, on your eye when you directly look at an LED light source is huge. And it gets more and more concentrated with cob, which is chip on board. And more of them you tile together, the center, the center light density can be 10,000 or 50,000 more than any other type of light bulb with the total lumens. So it's bad so for my this eyes. Is, what's going is it bad for my eyes? What is it? Okay. Ha <laughs> ha. Come on. I want to I want to know. Okay, I want to know. I want to know. I want to know what it does. Force and okay. 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 If I punch you in your shoulder. Yep with the little female that I am with certain amount of force, you may not feel much. Okay. If I get Mr. T e to punch <laughs> you sure. on your shoulder, you'd be sure. knocked off. Sure. So it's the sheer force, okay? So light has the same thing. Light can have the power on your shoulder that's concentrated in the shoulder. If somebody punches it over a big, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, pillow, Okay, so you're That's saying different. LEDs are, one. are 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 sending LEDs, the light power is concentrated coming right. right so what is this? What is the negative impact? Hang on. What is the what are the negative impacts of this uneven pressure? Uneven, the huge nonlinear uneven pressure. So when lasers came out, that amount of light. If I calculate the power that falls from a little laser pointer mm -hmm. in your eye. Mm. That is 10,000 times less than what these auto LED headlights and street lights are doing to your eye. So, so I agree. I don't laser, disagree with you. When the, lasers, when, the lasers I, came out, when the lasers came out, everybody put a warning sign, don't shoot it in your eye. Why? Because there's a lot of light going inside your eye. A street light, if you look at directly underneath it or directly at an auto headlight from, I don't care, 40 feet away. I agree with you 100%. So it's putting way more light than the sun ever does. Who, any ophthalmologist, if you go out there, they're going to tell you, don't look at the sun. It's not because the infrared light necessarily or UV. It is the sheer light power. And a little dinky LED, not LED, laser diode, a bad one from 30 years ago. That light has light density that is a thousand times more than the sun. Light density is lumens, okay? Mm -hmm. it, it, I'm sorry, lumens per meter squared per square radian. That is the brightness. And glare is directly proportional to lum, uh, luminance squared. So it okay. is the luminance that I, matters. Let me jump in here. Let me jump in here, okay? So I agree Please. with you that there's a lot of crappy outdoor luminaires out there. I agree with you that these headlight systems, particularly when I'm driving in a sedan and someone's driving like a Suburban or something like that and it's higher, is brutal to have in your rear view mirror. But I don't see any health effects. What are the health effects? Okay. Can it blind so, you? All, Can it glare is eyes. bad. Glare is bad. Okay. Well, you have to pay attention to what glare is. Why is glare bad? Glare has never been as bad as what certain LED luminaires have created. Agree. And laser, Agree. when people 
when when lasers are used for uh, auto headlights, it will be worse. And why? Because the luminance, luminance is again light density in space in a particular space. It's not just in square meter. It's light density in square meter per solid angle. That solid angle is the one determines what can come to your eye. And that mathematics I won't get into, and all this publication will come out someday. But if your eye literally is absorbing now lumens, finally it counts as lumens. First, it's the lumen density, but lumen density determines how many lumens in a, in a, in a per square area is going to come and fall. And you have to add up all the lumen density over the area, then you get total lumens. That's how it works. So if your eye is now absorbing 50 million lumens versus normally what you're used to, it's 10 lumens. 50 million lumens, that is a lot of optical power that could fry your retina. I so you're, ta care. you're talking what retinal burn. That's what I was going to say. So retinal, retinal, burn is, burn. retinal burn is interesting. Do we have any known cases of this? It will happen over time because people are covering their eyes and it'll have to... No, but luminaires happen. are getting better. I agree with you. There's a disaster in outdoor lighting. There's tons of bad outdoor luminaires. No, let's, let's get into LEDs as more challenges. So, so it creates this non-uniform, concentrated light concentration profile on the surface, and it happens to propagate also directionally. Everybody knows LEDs have glare, LEDs have directional property. No other light sources have, well, again, if, a, if an incandescent light bulb, halogen in particular, luminance can get quite high, but luminance is still no, probably no more than uh, 1,500 nits, let's say about 2,000 nits. LEDs are producing a million to 5 million nits. That's a million lumen per meter squared per solid angle. And that amount of light, and your eye is a little bit of a new, you, you, at, at the end you have to calculate the amount of exact lumens are falling on your retina. And it is enormous amount from those auto headlights. And there is nothing, the point is, if fine, this is what the LED light is doing. So if I put reflectors, if I put diffusers, if it'll diffuse, guess what? No. Mathematics will tell you this thing is called, this is this non-uniform uh, lum luminance distribution on the surface is exactly why, exactly the reason LED panels, uh, flat LEDs produce a lambertian. And we I have hate, to I hate LED to panels. Okay, I'm, I'm going to jump in here. Okay. So do you know what the second best lighting measurement instrument I know is called? Greg Eric. And I'm the best one. Okay. So I agree That's with right. you. Let, right. let, me, let, me, let me finish. So I, I can walk. I look at headlights that are LED. I know. I walk in. I can see a T12. He can recognize a T12. He'll tell me what color it is, all that sort of yeah. stuff. These eyes right here, no light. Okay. I don't agree That's with right. you on one thing. I would say that I, I don't believe, I don't, I'm not a mathematician, I'm a light bulb salesman, but here's what I'm going to tell you. I think that it's absolutely fundamentally different when you make an indirect LED light fixture than when you have a direct LED light fixture. There's something else happening. That light's getting you mixed up. Finish. It's gonna getting re-reflected. In order to understand LED illumination, first you understand, first you have to understand each chip, which I have been discussing. And then you have to understand how these chips are tiled. Because they're flat, you can only mount them on flat things. You cannot ever mount them on a circular thing. It yeah, doesn't you match. Yeah, fl but okay? you flip it upside down and put it on a circular ref reflector. It, you, have to, you have to say how a Lambertian distribution, which every flat LEDs produce, every flat Light sources produce a Lambertian, LED or otherwise. Lambert said that, and we won't get into it. This is just how it is. Um, I will write a paper on it. It'll come out. You can read that if you want. It's very, very technical. So if an LED is producing a Lambertian, which is in 3D, it's spherical, but it's a very special type of sphere. It's not like the sun. Uh, it, again, gets very, very complicated mathematically. What you said doesn't work to the extent you think it does is because LEDs not only produce this nonlinear 
uh, non-uniform light distribution on the surface and in front of it, which is near field, it also propagates in a way that no other light sources do. This is just what light does. Light propagates very, very differently depending on what the distribution of the light is. Okay. What because are the consequences? That's why laser, but what are the consequences? The so, consequences is that now I'm going to use a mathematics. This is not going to make sense to you. So I have to boil down to a layman's term. The layman's term is when a nonlinear, a non-uniform light distribution is produced, it stays nonlinear as it's propagating. Mm -hmm. Okay. It doesn't spread out like what the sun is doing. Sun is like this. Mm -hmm. The sun spreads light. Mm -hmm all directions it's called almost omnidirectionally certainly it's quite omnidirectional when we're as far as away as as we are from the sun mm -hmm. nature never produced a light source that is flat if it did we would have never been in existence because it would have constantly be frying things everywhere okay so when this light source is created not only what's happening at the surface is a problem it it's propagation in space is a problem and that propagation has a mathematical formula that cannot change whether it goes through a lens. It changes a little, but this nonlinearity, non-uniformity maintains. You cannot do much about it. Okay? There's so nothing you, you can do. You it's, called the Fourier, it's called Fourier optics. Fourier optics says if you create a Gaussian or a Lambertian, Gaussian doesn't change ever. Lambertian doesn't change ever. So the only thing you can do, and people do this with LED luminaires and in the light bulbs that you have above you, like Greg does, it really is putting LEDs in different facets. So yes. you know, straight LEDs, this will produce a Lambertian, that surface will produce a Lambertian, this flat surface will produce a Lambertian, that force, and if you put a diffuser around it, as long as the power is low, like 900, 900 uh, lumens total, it sort of looks okay. I can still tell that it is distributing and illuminating the room very, very differently, color or otherwise. Mm -hmm. We'll leave spectrum out of this for now. The light distribution from even this LED that Cree sold and other cell now, the household light bulbs that has A19 uh, form, Edison light bulb form, if you get sensitive, it, the light distribution is still different because it's Lambertian here, Lambertian on this, this side, Lambertian on this side, and then totally it's not a Lambertian, but per flat facet, it's always a Lambertian. Per flat facet, it's already, already uh, propagating directionally. This one propagates directionally this yeah, way. Nisa, and it Nisa. is never, never, ever going to be equivalent to- Fair a enough. Like that I agree with you. I agree with you. There's nothing more beautiful than an IR halogen bulb. But here, nothing. Right. Nothing will be. Right. Beat. There's a reason for it because nothing. it is not producing a Lambertian. It never yeah. will. Well, no, yeah. Well, let me, but I, I agree with you. But I don't see yeah. any con, I don't see any consequences. Consequence is not. That's what we're trying to get bad, to. Is it long term? Is it now? When it when are these consequences going to come? Are we going to be are our eyesight going to be? No, I, I think I think no. You, no, there, a math professor is going to come beat you what? up because you don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Nisa. What are the consequences? I am absolutely one hundred percent correct mathematically. Consequences. Uh, yes. You have to listen. Mm -hmm. You have to listen what I am saying. So, the most dangerous LED lamps and luminaires out there right now. Are the ones from the street lights? Are the ones from car headlights and warehouse lights? And why is that okay, the danger? Case? How you have to care? Yes, danger. How because each one of them is coming from only a flat facet. Am I going to get a sunburn? Am I going to get a sunburn? Are my eyes going to be damaged? Your What's going to happen? Your eye is getting enough of a burn. Okay. Your eye is getting enough of a burn. Okay. The, the reason your eyes are not completely ruined because you're only looking at for, I don't know how much you drive or how much you are under those street lamps. But if you spend enough time looking at these lights directly, believe me, it will ruin your eyes. It is not only about blue light and blue light is getting magnified because the total luminance is high. People don't understand that either. If you have extremely high 
luminance at the center of it. At the center of that blue light is enormous. When I asked did the podcast with me, Mark, what was his name? Mark. Uh, Mark Lean. Mark Lean. Mark Lean got it. He says it, it amplifies every wavelength. Of course it does. And if you have a blue high wavelength to begin with, that blue is enormously high, enormously high for an LED at the center axis. Okay. So here's, I so, got a question. I got a question for you now. Okay. So we don't have any specific consequences that you can point to and say in the municipality of Southern U S city X, Y, Z, once they installed these really bad street lights, we noticed a increase in ocular degeneration amongst um, the nighttime wa uh, walkers of the streets of 40%. It may take 10 years. It may take 10 years. It's like inorganic food. Okay. So when 30, 40, 35 years ago, probably maybe 40 years ago, people started to replace real sugar with high fructose corn syrup and People try to replace butter with hydrogenated vegetable oil and margarine. There were evidence that these inorganic substances are going to clog your arteries and affect your heart. Okay. There were evidence that they didn't want to listen. We're and people didn't die of that right away. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, after look, 35, no, 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 there's no, you there's no to to corn lobby here. Listen to me. You, you, I, listen, listen, listen. I, I, I would say I'm going to take it one step further with you because not only am I, you know, do I think that, you know, there's no evidence that you have, but that's okay. What I'm saying is that we've had other scientists on this show that know the same math you do and all the other people you do. No, and they do not. Hang on. Hang they, on. No, not, not only that. Hey, let me finish. Not only do they say you're wrong, but they're saying that they can create healthy lighting for people. Are they being using LED? No. Are they being completely no. ridiculous? They are being almost ridiculous. Especially almost? when it comes to street lighting. Are almost they lying? Because. Are they lying? You, you really have not. They're like, not what is lying. It that they they don't understand mathematics. Okay. I'm. Do I. Let me repeat things again. So you have to listen to me carefully. Okay. One LED chip, one millimeter by one millimeter produce a certain amount of total lumen power and certain amount of luminance. Mm -hmm. That luminance at the center is already quite high. And this aggregates when you tile many of them together. Mm -hmm. This is the math people don't understand. If you tile them, then the center luminance can go in theory almost to infinity, forget infinity. we we'll talk about 10 million okay. nits. And the next time we can talk about 20 million nits, lighting industry would have been horrified. People, the lighting guru that I know, that I have worked with also, these aren't optics people, they don't know much optics and they didn't have to, as I said before, but they know lighting. They have said as early as 30, 40, 50 years ago, thou shall not increase the luminance of a light bulb more than 300 nits or 500 nits. This is what's comfortable for the eye. This is what's healthy for it. They didn't have any proof, but that is was a very, very good recommendation. Okay? They eyeballed it. They can You can back calculate from the sun because sun is why we are here. And sun, as far as the sun is, although sun's luminance is very high, what falls on our eyes is a certain amount of foot candles. And yeah. that certain amount of foot candles, they have related I don't, I don't to disagree with you. And I like I your humility. I like your humility. But let me throw this one at you. What do you have to say to the scientists and the people that we've talked to that are say that they're on the path to not only creating lighting systems that are, uh, are electric and artificial lighting systems that don't hurt people, but they're on the path to creating electric and artificial lighting systems using a flat LEDs, using those flat LEDs. Flat that tiled LEDs. Yeah. They're Forget on the it. way to it. Flat tiled LEDs. They're using, they're going to use, the hang on, hang on. Even they're going to use that system to create healthy lighting systems that are going to make people more no. productive and happier. Say something to them. Because... Light has to be measured, healthy light has to be measured via the right spectrum, 
via the right luminance. Luminance is lumen per square meter per solid angle. That parameter cannot, cannot for a good lighting exceed something like no more than a thousand nits. 300 is better. Okay. And these okay. LED auto headlights and people don't know how to measure it. If you measure it and I can calculate it, I can simulate it. And I, I know people who can measure it accurately and not the entire lighting industry is not doing that. I, know I don't think, I don't can. think anybody even knows what light is. I don't think people even okay. know what it is. Okay, light has lighting has four or five properties. We can name them now. Optics before you join. Before I think the it's spiritual, physical, emotional. Like my, I think course, it has different. Entirely I, with all of that. Yeah. But scientifically, when 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 Greg and I were talking before the podcast started, mm -hmm. um, light is quantified, and this started with Max Planck, Einstein, and all of that. Light is quantified quantified in four ways. Just light itself. That has nothing to do with lighting. lighting. Lighting, of course, has to use light, and it has its own parameters in the lighting environment that are important. Mm. Okay? So light itself is magnitude of the light, or that turns into intensity, whatever, polarization, wavelength, and phase. So okay? which, one of those four, am I swim four, which, which one of those are we swimming around in right now? I'm going like this. What am I affecting when I'm all, doing all that? The four fundamental, my four fundamental parameters of a photon. Okay. Photon, and this happens it works in five G two. We don't call them photons, but but they are equivalent of a uh, of a particle in microwave that is doing the same thing. Light is an electromagnetic wave. So is a five G. So is wireless. They're all electromagnetic waves, radio waves. Light just happens to have a different. Is frequency. my brain one of those two? So. My brain's an electromagnetic wave. My brain is an electromagnetic wave too, doesn't it? Doesn't have an electromagnetic Yes, there is there is a there is a connection to See, that I as think well. they're all um, connected and I don't think we even know what it yeah. is, Nisa. I don't even think we know we what it is. We don't know everything about it, but scientifically we know certain things about it that made us create light bulbs in a way that we wanted, that made us made us create lasers that we used. I gave you four uh, applications, four applications of lasers is fiber optics, medical, welding and uh recording images you know what okay. i think you know what's crazy so, you know what i think i think we're like a bunch of naked apes running around with torches i think that's really how much we know well we are very ignorant about a lot of things but at the same time it takes some amount of knowledge to make a laser work and those are the people who taught me it takes some amount of work to build a car it takes some amount of work to build a rocket and behind the science and numerical work that went on is exactly the same, okay? And we haven't even talked about LEDs thermal issues and we can. It's the same thermal, fundamental thermal issues people have to know when they build a rocket. There's nothing different. Those fundamental laws of thermodynamics, how heat propagates, heat has to conduct, these all work based on certain governing laws. These are governing physics laws. Well, let me ask you this: How do those go you, How do those governing How do those? I'm sitting on the side of my bed. I open up my Bible to read the parable of the talents at night. I turn on my LED light bulb. It's on a shade. And how do those laws of physics hurt me? How do the laws of physics from your like LED how, do, how does that LED light? How does it hurt me? First of all, if it's not directly coming at you, if the total number of lumens falling on your eye is in the in the in the scenario is described it is not going to hurt you as nowhere as much as when you stand under a warehouse light on the ceiling that well, comes yeah, from a tile there's a, there's a reason why when cops come up to your car at the side of the road they shine a flashlight right in your eyes is because they want to blind you and they want you to stop so light is both both makes us see and stops us from seeing. So yeah, glare is bad. That's but right. that's all that's all I'm that's taking. Right. Nisa, all I can take from this from glare. what you've told us is that glare is bad. A lot of people a lot of people say glare is bad, but what is glare? Look at the definition of UGR, which is unified glare rating. Glare sure. has about even within the lighting industry about at least 10 different definitions. But each definition what's common in them, each definition what's common in them is glare is proportional to luminance squared. Exactly. Okay. So you have tighter luminance. You shine it in your eyes. Don't do that. What's next? The higher, higher the luminance, higher the glare, non-linearly. 
square of the luminance affects glare. So this luminance is non-uniform in an LED light. It's non-uniform. So if you go directly stand in front of it, that glare is very Yeah, but nobody's doing that, Nisa. The glare when you're from the side. Nobody's doing that. People are, yes, I agree with you on some street lights. They're ridiculously like lasers pointing at you. Some of the old stuff, sure. Okay, then I have to talk, I have to talk mathematics again to you, which you don't like, obviously. You see this now? I see it. You see this now? I do. Okay. No. You see the arrow in the middle? I do. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you're directly in underneath and a street light, mm-hmm. it's most detrimental, right? I can't get the, <laughs> the image. Look I, up the opposite. Or if you look I look straight. Just with that way, so I need to get close. Okay. If I directly underneath the street light or auto headlight, it's the worst. Okay. Yeah, but nobody's going like looking this, up at Nisa. It. Nobody's looking up like this at it, Nisa. Well, that's why you're still alive. Yes. But if you're driving. But if I take an old, if I take an old mag light halogen flashlight and I shine it in your eyes, it hurts too. It's not just LEDs. It hurts too because halogen has a fairly high luminance. Again, I go back to the 300 or even 200. The 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 best luminance to fall on your eye, more or less constantly, is around 150 to 200 nits. Halogen yeah, is much I don't go stare that. at That's the hard. sun either. I don't go staring at the sun during an eclipse for the same reason. It is the sheer magnitude of it that you have no appreciation for, okay? Halogen has sheer magnitude glare would be UGR rating of 17, and UGR would be off the chart with 1,000 when you're directly looking at an auto headlight. So you have to have respect for thousands versus 20, okay? What would you like? A 1,000? dollars in your pocket or 10 so what yeah, but it, that's not desirable. that's not consequences what what like so what you're saying like what i'm taking from this and i agree with you is don't stare at outdoor street lights don't stare at the sun don't stare at a solar eclipse and don't shine led lights right in your eyes but other than that i don't are, see any consequences if you, are a, if you are a strong healthy and insensitive to these things then it's more or less true. Even you will be affected 10 years from now, believe me, if this continues. But let's leave that aside. The reason you're not just, you know, uh, falling off the earth and your eyes not instantly the, damaged. The sky is has been, listen, Lisa, the sky has been falling since Chicken Little, okay? There's a million different people out there telling us we're all going to die. The, the, bad, the earth is going to burn up. The, the global warming is going to get you. The LED lights are coming after you. And if it's not bad the LED analogy. lights, it's the corn let's, syrup let's in your cornflakes. I mean, I get it. Okay. We're all going to get out. We're all after us. But, every analogy to everything. The analogy you should be linking LED lights to in terms okay. of the sheer magnitude of radiation. Let's go back to radiation. Atomic radiation when it went off in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. If you're at the epicenter, it hurts you more than when you're in the periphery. So periphery is the what I drew here to the mm-hmm. side. Sure. So periphery, your luminance goes down, your glare goes down a little, but if it's still a thousand times more than what you're normally used to, it still hurts you. There are millions of people who are complaining. They're not right in front of the, the uh, car headlights. They are sometimes half a mile away, but they are within the cone. Within the cone, the magnitude, sheer magnitude of glare and luminance is high enough. It's affecting them today. So many people stop driving because of it. I minimize driving at night because of it, because my eye is more sensitive. I Maybe agree with that 100%. Are, I agree with the street. So I agree with the headlights, the moment, but that's it. If you are not, you're not in the epicenter of a cyclone, or epicenter is actually there's a hole. You're okay. It's the periphery and the cyclone that works. But I'm in the. I'm in the. I'm radi- in this. I'm in the spiritual eye of the storm all the time, Nisa. Good for you. That's the best. <laughs> I'm serious. I don't. But- I. I think. I think what you're saying. I. I. And 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 you can you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think you're, you, you know, you're throwing math at us, but no consequences. Tell me about the rats that you had under the lights for hours that are now, they're losing all their hair and dying of liver cancer or something like that. That's some experiment you've done. That's what you need they to do. They have done. Grab some rats. They have done. Throw them in a box. 
Put some LED lights on them. Don't shine them directly in their eyes, but shine them. And let's see if the rats lose their hair or gain cancer or a finger falls people, off or something happens. People have done all these experiments and I can send you papers. There are evidence this is happening. So if you don't want to read them and claim that it's not. I want to interview them on my podcast. Where? Fine. There are hundreds of papers I read and they're doing it a little bit wrong too, because you know why? Nobody knows what the center luminance is. You have to measure that very, very carefully because it drops off pretty quickly. So your resolution of measurement has to be extremely good. Mm -hmm. But if you put a subject underneath an LED light, parts of its body is directly aligned with the center of the LED light. That part is getting damaged the most, not the other side of it, because it's very, very directional. Mm -hmm. And if you put it on the rat's eyes, because the eye is a small part and you directly align it with it, the sheer magnitude of light density, total light, therefore, absorbed by the rat's eyes or our eyes, it's, you know, a million times more than what's recommended. If you talk so to your So should we eye use doctor, LED lighting or not? Should we sell LED lights? Should we be done with LED lighting as an industry? You should be done with LED auto headlights and LED street lights until people know how to spread it out. There is a way to spread it out, and I have a patent on it. And light is an electromagnetic wave. It has a wave property when it propagates. Sound is a wave. It has a wave property when it propagates. I have Bose uh, uh, audio uh, equipment right now that I told Scott about. Bose is very, very famous for doing greatest Bose speakers and Bose uh, equipment are used in the best um, concert hall. Okay, there is a reason for that. And how did he do it? It turns out the way he directed sound waves and took the uh, background noise and other things, he clarified the sound waves and put it where he wanted is very similar to what I have proposed for LED light so that the light can be diffused well because they're both waves, okay? Mm -hmm. Until somebody does that, LEDs like LED auto headlamps and street lamps are extremely bad for you because of the sheer luminance, sheer glare. It's not just a high glare. It's enormously, enormously, enormously high glare. That is the intensity of it. So you have a patent on it. Why don't you make lights that work? Become a manufacturer uh, for us. It would require a lot of capital, human capital, as well as money and all of that. And every Greg, Greg is rich. He's got lots of money to invest. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but I don't have enough money. Believe me, I've talked with, you don't know how many lighting companies I've talked with. You know, they, mm -hmm. it's, it's not easy, but it can be done. Someday it will be done. Someday I will help somebody make it because right now I have the only design tool and understanding to do it. It's not that easy, It, but it can be done. Someday it'll be 3D printed, it'll be that easy. Nisa, uh, but Nisa, Nisa we, what's the name of your book? Understanding LED Illumination. It is published by CRC, and CRC has been around for more than 100 years um, publishing scientific books. And Anybody who studied where can they and chemistry. Where, where can the listeners find your book? The book yeah. is extremely popular in Canada. Two countries the book is extremely popular in is in Canada and in Germany. And both countries have excellent um, engineering schools, um, offer uh, very, very good physics and math programs. Uh, in Germany, it good is podcast used hosts. In they have good podcast <laughs> hosts. Right. So if you, where do you live in Toronto? Yes. I live on a farm outside of Toronto. So but hang on. So Am Amazon.ca? Can we get it on Amazon.ca? It is in emadon.ca, but yeah. if you want to go to University of Toronto Scientific Library, they yeah. have it. Cool. McGill has it. Um, uh, Scott, you know, Scott, when uh, you do, you know, when you put, make sure you, Scott, make sure you put this on a link in the website so that people can uh, download uh, Nisa Khan's book. And then on LinkedIn, is there a blog, a website, or a blog where other people can find your writings, Nisa? Uh, I don't have a blog. I have written something like. 20 to 25 articles in LinkedIn. 
Okay. Uh, they are all there, and okay. I often comment in LinkedIn, so there are comments there. I have three peer-reviewed publications that came yes. out in 2015, 2016, and 2017, and I'm working on at least two more uh, that will be available in public sometime this year. So the ones that are published on LED lighting in 2015, 2016, 2017, they are available in public, but you have to be a member of the OSA, which stands for Optical Society of America. And the journal is Applied Optics. Uh, you may have to pay something like $35 to get more than the abstract, or you can join a university uh, department, optics department, and they can probably give it to you. Sounds good. I can't distribute them for free. I've written, uh, I have signed an agreement I with Optical Society of America. Thank you. All right. So uh, we want to do a round table with you, Nisa. Like we're going to get some other scientists together, maybe on the show, maybe okay. in person. Would you be open for that? Absolutely. But only thing I will say, the scientists have to have a very good math and physics background to understand Maxwell's equations, to understand how to okay. do math in spherical coordinates. Okay? okay? There aren't too many people mm -hmm. like that. So if you can't do a spherical integral in three dimensions, you mm -hmm. don't know mathematics to understand LEDs and lasers. Well, that's for sure me and Greg. So we I have can't. no idea about that. <laughs> yeah, <I can't. laughs> so for anybody out there who's going to say, oh, he's a scientist and he's a scientist, we're not equal. You're not equal until you know what math Maxwell's equations say in plain English. Because so we're probably, we're probably, yeah, I got, it, I got it. You're, I, I, da, da, da. the, uh, I got to run because I think it's almost noon, eh? Just so you know, we've been talking for almost an hour, if you can believe it. Um, sure. Uh, the, do you have any? Do you want to review the podcast first, or can we put that out in a couple weeks? You can put that out anytime you like. You Perfect. know, okay. yeah, we've had arguments back and forth and you're not totally convinced and you can't be totally convinced until you understand Maxwell's equations and spherical integrals. That's how, advanced, how many advanced, people in the world, how many people in the world understand Maxwell's equations? Right now I know three or four. Right. How many people do My, you know? That's it. Yesterday I talked with somebody I went to graduate school with and he was in complete agreement with me because huh. I, knew what Greg knows. I spoke with Greg yesterday and he's like, you know, Nisa, with some of these things, we're so far advanced, it's very, very difficult to, difficult to convince people. But we're not making it up. It is not an opinion because, you know, knowing difficult math is very, very rare. So if you're going to bring me in front of so is there, if there's a thousand people, is there a thousand? If there's, is there, is there a thousand people in the world that understand Maxwell's equations? No, no. It, does Maxwell understand no Maxwell way. equations? <laughs> Lambert, Lambert did. You know, sometimes I read you know, this stuff. So hang on, I read a lot of books on like science and stuff like that. And I some when I get into this, when I get into this, um. Oh shit! What's that Max Planck shit? Oh, mechanics. What do they call that? I'm I'm in vertigo right now. Quantum mechanics. Whenever I read anything on quantum mechanics, I think they're all full of shit. As soon as you, yeah. if you think you can understand quantum mechanics, you can't. And they start. I start reading this stuff, and I'm like, this is a load of crap. And I think, is it this Maxwell guy? Is he one of these load of crap guys, Nisa? Quantum mechanics didn't exist when Maxwell was around. His work helped get quantum mechanics established. And quantum mechanics... See, I think, quantum, have, I think quantum mechanics is a scam. I think it's a scam. You have to let me go through it because <laughs> quantum mechanics... It's, no, it's new, Nisa. We got to go. We, we're going to do another one. We have to. You and I have to get together and do one in person. It's the only way to... Well, let, me, let me leave you with one or two liners about quantum sure. mechanics. Quantum mechanics, it's extremely hard to fathom, even for physicists. And quantum mechanics is the way it's interpreted, even by 99.9% .9 of the physicists, is inaccurate. Einstein had the right doubts about quantum mechanics. He didn't, he didn't buy it. But there are quantum mechanics works beautifully when you don't apply to a single entity. It, 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 it works beautifully statistically when you have many, many fundamental particles. You know it what? The, you know what? You know what? 
You know what the quantum scientists, when they were, described this sort of shit to me, they remind me of? It reminds me of people who are sitting me down and saying, Michael, the world started with Adam and Eve 5,000 years ago. And then there was the great flood. And you can't really understand this because you have to take Jesus into your heart. And until you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you're not going to understand <laughs> that God created the world 5,000 years ago. And the reason why there's dinosaur bones at the top of Mount Everest is because of the great flood of Noah. The quantum scientists you know sound exactly like the creationists when they Thank talk you. about quantum Thank mechanics. Thank you. You, you know can't why? get it because you're not spiritually advanced enough as <laughs> Max Planck and all his fucking whack jobs over in Ger Sorry, I swore. Sorry about that, Nisa. But all his whack no, jobs no. over in Germany really? dreaming I about know. string theory. It's so ridiculous. I can't handle it. Quantum mechanics is uh. not easy. And just about <laughs> everybody gets it wrong. And we humans someday you and i should get together and talk about science and spirituality and and religion and jesus Ooh. and what we want to do this is not hoax there is something to all of this and one thing i want to leave you with science is never going to be complete neither is religion ever going to be complete that is the beauty of nature there is mysterious oh. and out things by only only people who understand as much as spirituality, religion, science can be understood. The only type of people are absolutely the best mathematicians in the world. And if you understand math for you're than such math a math, you're such a math snob. I don't like you anymore. If you, if you understand <laughs> mathematics forwards and backwards, you become so humble. You yeah, sure. have to believe in mysticism. You know, it's funny. It's funny because it's, I agree with you. It's funny. Cause I was talking to, uh, um, a mathematician, uh, I don't know when it was, maybe a year or two ago. Anyway, what he was saying to me is he's like, uh, you, know how, you know how we went to the moon? I said, yeah, the Apollo rockets blasted out. He goes, no, no, calculus. That's how we went there. It's nothing to do with rockets yeah. or anything. It's calculus. And he said, you know well, how... He said, he said, God, he said, and this is physicists are the same way like this. He's like, God is math. That is what God is. In a way, in a way, because a mathematical equation is so beautiful if it's sure. correct. And if it's, and it is complete. It is the only complete thing we have. Yeah, for sure. And, and, it, and, and, it's, in, and we, it's infinite. It's infinite. Yeah. And it's it omnipresent. Infinity. And it's omnipresent. It's everywhere at the same time. Math is mathematical equations are everywhere. They are like unto God, in a way. There is one thing you didn't include. You included a whole lot of things. That's true. The other thing the math includes is what's known as infinitesimal, and it is the infinitesimal mathematics I had to use to figure out LED lighting. Oh, okay? she brings it back home. <laughs> The infinitesimal is the reason why calculus works. Calculus is embedded in it in the infinitesimal concept. The minute you're a human, the minute you look at a ball or measure part of the ball, the infinitesimal is not pure anymore. It has been turned into finite. Well, this is my show, and only one other person has finished this show, and he's dead now. <laughs> Okay, so here's where I'll finish. Alpha and All Omega, right. the beginning and the end. God and math. And How's anything that? in between. Ah, you, you can't finish my show. <laughs> I'm a last word freak. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Nisa. Have a wonderful afternoon. Keystone Technologies. Go to K-E-Y-S-T-O-N-E-T-E-C-H.com for the reigning champ of best product award at Nailed. And they got some stuff coming out hot at Light Fair, Greg. They do. They're going to have new HID replacement lamps that are downsized. A lot of times you run into a fixture that has an HID and you don't have a lot of room to work with. Like a 150-watt metal halide medium base, they're small. Yeah, they for sure. They put out a lot of light, but they're small. Yeah. And yeah, it's hard sure. to get an equivalent if you have a downsized fixture that – all the room is for is a 150 medium base. You got to get a tight little bulb to fit in there. You know and what? Keystone you, has them now. You know what, too? You don't need 10 years of life. 
You just want to disconnect that stupid ballast and put a bulb in there for two years because those stupid 150-watt metal halide bulbs don't last anyway. You're right. It's about energy you, savings, is, man. Yeah, let's get it knocked out. And Keystone has it for you. You don't need 10 years of life. Come on, all these people. This guy walked into my showroom the other day, Greg. Comes into my showroom. He's like, I bought these lights from you four years ago. It says 25,000 hours. I said, buddy, read the warranty on the side. Three hours a day, yeah. a normal residential usage. <laughs> Get out of here, man. There's a, the new ones are over there for sale. I paid $35 for this bulb. Yeah, the new ones are $5.36. You want some? In yeah, two months, exactly. they're going to be 3 bucks. What do you want from me, buddy? You saved all your money and everything. Yeah, move man. On. Move on. Mm -hmm. So but you know what? I love those. Uh, that's, that's, the next, that's the next beautiful thing. You don't have to rip out the whole fixture. You can put in a nice little compact light bulb and tell the customer it's going to last three years, and then we're going to relamp it with whatever's better then, son. Go to KeystoneTech.com. That's K-E-Y-S-T-O-N-E-T-C-H.com. I don't know the warranty on that. What's the warranty on those uh, things? Like, oh, we don't know yet. It'll it's be coming up. Yeah, coming that's up not a, it's going to be five year though. Yeah, it'll, it'll be, be five year. year. I've seen some sure, preliminary. Sure. So yeah. Yeah, so go to KeystoneTech.com and, of course, the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors, NAILD.org, Greggy, and Dr. Nisa Khan. Hey, Nisa, we got it on. Me, you, and Mr. T and Greg got it on on the show. <laughs> That was fun. Just a little bit, yeah. Fun times. <laughs> that was a good time. I think the end. I I think I'm gonna leave the part in at the end when we talked. We went all crazy after we were supposed to st shut her down. That was great. It was a good discussion. Keep it rolling. The hardcore listeners will get a little treat at the end, of, with <laughs> me and Nisa Khan talking quantum physics because I know so much okay. about that on the Get a Grip mm. on Lightning podcast. Written on the rectory wall, there's a sign there for all. You are lost. Lord is there to find you.